On est de retour sur le plateau euh, Charlotte Dipanda, euh, fit Singila à l'instant. J'espère que... Singila, est-ce qu'il est encore au Cameroun Je ne sais même pas. Ah, qu'est-ce que j'en sais, moi Peut-être il est encore au Mais Cameroun. Mais attends, quelle question Le goût du Cameroun de ça. Corona. Non, laisse tomber. Oh. Les gens l'ont vu avec la ceinture CD, on a seulement dit que... Charlotte Dipanda. Maman. Je t'aime jusqu'à. J'aime même la ceinture de ça. Pourtant, c'est de c'était Christian, Christian Dior. Wow. Wow. Non, les Camerounais sont forts. Et ça dit, Sœur Dina, comme vraiment Papa. disait quelqu'un. Hein? C'est de ces Christian Dior. Non, mais tu sens que les. les, 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 les... On lit les enveloppes fermées. Non, je veux dire les Le inter... contenu. Moi, je veux dire les internautes. Rêve tellement de voir Singila, Singila et, et Charlotte Dipanda ensemble, ensemble. que. Euh, c'est deux gens qui ne seront jamais ensemble. Jamais, non. C'est deux c'est comme ça. Donc, ils, donc, ils, non. Seront, ils ne seront jamais mariés. Ils ne non. seront jamais mais, mais ensemble. Mais ils pourront quand même. Euh... Même faire, ils ne pourront pas. C'est deux complices. Ils sont ça très, se voit. très, très trop. Tu habites avec eux. Mais ils ont même fait un direct, non Que ça anyway, fait deux mois, je euh, pas vu. Euh, attends, attends. Mais... C'est la mère de Charles Dipanda qui a accouché Singla. Calvino, et c'est le père Calvino, de Singla qui a accouché Charles Dipanda. Calvino, deux personnes. Donc il peut créer deux des personnes, choses comme créer. Deux personnes qui ont de bloquer la enregistre des albums ensemble. Comme ça, une fois, deux fois. Non, ne peuvent pas être mari et femme. Ne peuvent même pas faire. Sinon, ça va se gâter. La jalousie, les machins. Ça va s'arrêter. C'est ce qu'on appelle le showbiz. Showcalbiz. Anyway. <rire> Elle mine. Voilà. Coach, ouais. <rire> aujourd'hui, euh, euh, je, suis, je suis là ce matin. Bye. Oui. Morning. Parce que généralement, je ne suis pas là. Hein, ouais. Je n'étais pas là. J'ai eu euh, les deux derniers, ce malaise. Les, voilà, deux dernières voilà, semaines. les deux dernières semaines. Euh, bienvenue, bonjour. Good morning. So, today, we are talking about uh, to why you need to start a home-based business, business and how to do it. Yeah. Home base. Home base from home. From home. Yes, yes I understand. Yeah. Okay. So I can be in my home mm -hmm. and and starting my business. Actually, you should. Actually, you should be in your home. This is what we are saying today that everyone needs to start the business from home. From home. Everyone. everyone. Okay. Okay. I mean, okay. you have the flow now. We we are uh, we just have our pen and our block Very note. To note what you as you, you will say to to us today. Yes, very good, very good today. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the morning, like I said, um, everyone needs to start a home based business. I have, yeah. mm -hmm. but I have home based business. Businesses, businesses. meaning <laughs> me a lot of, a lot of things. And uh, I think that everybody needs to do the same, whether you are done with. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a doctor, you're a teacher, or you're a nurse, uh, or you work for a, any kind of institution, you're a banker, you, you need to start a home day today. Mm -hmm. mm. Why? It is because today it is very risky to have just one source of income. Mm -hmm. You know, in English we say that you shouldn't put your uh, all your eggs in one basket. Because mm -hmm. if that basket falls and crashes, your all the eggs, all the fall. eggs go. You know, chakala, yeah. yeah. So all go eggs go. All, chakala, all the eggs go chakala. That is very nice. I go, I go, I go chakala. All the eggs go chakala. He's thinking he's improving. It's very important because uh -huh. you don't put all your eggs in one basket. One, one basket. It is very risky. Yes. And this is why we all need to start home based businesses. Okay. Uh, the second reason is because uh, the crisis that we are experiencing now, it's not easy. Some of us who speak English, and the global crisis, the pandemic, also has created a lot of opportunities for you to do businesses from home. You know, businesses that were not existing before today there are opportunities for us to do business. Now, if you don't do the businesses, who does? You should. There are opportunities. And the third reason why you should create a home-based business is because it is going to be a learning opportunity for you. The last two weeks, I've been talking about things you need to do to sustain your business. And you know, if you don't start a business, you don't learn these things. 
one of the important stuff you would learn about uh, life from starting a home-based business is that you learn how to sell mm -hmm. and selling is important now whether you're a woman looking for a husband or you're a husband looking for a wife you need to know how to sell if you do not know how to sell yourself then you don't get what you're looking for mm -hmm. so selling learning how to sell does not just end at the level of business but exceeds business and even transcends into life our daily lives now when you start uh, a home-based business there's also something you learn which is called emotional intelligence you learn how to deal with people. You learn that not everybody's temperament is the same. Mm -hmm. You learn how to treat your customers. And by extension, you're learning how to treat your children, your spouse, your friends, your neighbors. So it is important that you, you even if your interest is not to end up as an entrepreneur or a business person, start a home-based business so that you can learn this very important lesson of emotional intelligence. Something that you would learn when you start a home-based business is planning in English again they say if you fail to plan it means that you're planning to fail but many people do not know how to plan anything in their lives but when you start doing a business just from sitting down and planning that I have this amount of money I'll spend this is planning because it's budgeting mm -hmm. which is part of planning and it is going to teach you how to even plan your own personal life okay uh, your own personal finances your, your salary uh, expenditures for your children and so on so you see many lessons that you will learn when you start a home-based business you can start it today and tomorrow uh, you get something better and you stop but these lessons are going to stick with you so even if you're a student you can start a home-based business if you are a job seeker this is the best time to start a home-based business and pick up these skills that will help you even get a job later if you are a housewife, amazing, you can start a home-based business. It keeps you busy, it gives you uh, some income, of course, if your uh, spouse lets you do that. What I am saying is that everyone needs to be able to start a home-based business. So now that we have seen why you need to start a home-based business, let us discuss the opportunities that exist mm -hmm. because somebody will be thinking that okay I like to start a business what can I do what opportunities are there for people who want to start home-based businesses there are many opportunities many the first is food food not everybody likes food as much as I do because I like food but everybody needs food and today because people are getting very busy you see Carvino and Co are here, they are busy. Mm -hmm. Maybe their day becomes so busy that they cannot leave and have one hour or two hours to go uh, to a restaurant. You can bring food here mm -hmm. and they eat here. This is a business you can start from home and then you're making money from it. So food, any kind of food, whether they are fruits, vegetables, whatever kind of food, cooked, not cooked, you can start a business, a food business from home. Recently, I saw a young man doing that and I was very impressed that I can stay in my house and I need to eat plantains and I call him and he brings that for me. Maybe because I'm too busy to go to the market. He does that. So this is a business you can start from home. For people who like snails, I've seen a lot of young people getting into uh, selling snails from home. This is an amazing business. Vegetables are packaged from home and sold. So you can think about food you can also think about education have you ever heard about make it.cm this is an online platform from which you can teach the world it means that if students around the country around the world have assignments they have homework that they need someone to help them with you can stay in your house connect on make it.cm do the assignments or help them do these assignments and earn money from home this is a home-based business. You do not need to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. If you do not have a laptop, your cell phone becomes mm -hmm. your office. Mm -hmm. All you need is, is the data that you buy for, to serve on Facebook and WhatsApp. And you can do business from home. Very cost-effective, but can bring a lot of returns. So instead of just spending time surfing, which is something I do, of course, you could add something to that, a home-based business. You could also think about clothing. 
There are a lot of people today who get so busy that going shopping is not easy. Can you shop for them? Can you sell to them at home? You can do that from home. Today a lot of people do that. You can also create content. Since there are a lot of small businesses that are springing up every day, people need content to sell these businesses online. They need to sell on other platforms. Can you create content for them? Yes, if you are a good writer, you can stay home, create content for these people and get paid for it. This is a home-based business. You can also do e-commerce or get involved in the value chain of e-commerce. For example, uh, we see a lot of online stores where people sell and you can buy online. But now the issue of transportation from the online shops to your home, sometimes it becomes difficult. So if you're out there and you have a bike, moto, you can start a business besides the normal things you do. You can partner with all these people who have online stores and you pick up parcels and you deliver. This is another source of income. So you can do a lot of things. What about beauty? Beauty and health. You can start it right from home. I know that I can go to my hairdressers and get my hair done at home. Mm -hmm. This is a home-based business. I know that I can learn about a skincare product and I go to somebody's home and I buy. It is important. So there are many opportunities for you to start a home-based business. You just need to do the first thing that we discussed, see why you need to start. Then the second, what opportunities exist. Now let's go to the heart of our discussion. Number three, how to start. What do you need to do? How do you start until you have a home-based business running? I'm sure that's a question that everybody is asking. And I hope we are all uh, ready to learn. So we are going to discuss six steps okay. that will help you start your home-based business and run it effectively. Six steps. What is step one? Step one is what I call a passion and skills analysis. Passion and skills analysis. What is this? The best business to do is business that you're passionate about, that you love. Then you can really persist and be consistent and enjoy doing it. So you must ask yourself what passions you have. What are my passions? Most of the things I am doing today as business are things I am passionate about. So what are you passionate about? Ask yourself this. This is what I call the passion analysis. What skills do you have? Do you speak well? Like uh, our journalists in, in the studio, I'm not a, a very good speaker like they are. But they do speak well and they can leverage on this skill to start a home-based business. Do you write well? If you do, you can leverage on this skill to start a business. Do you cook well? You can leverage on this to start a business. So start by taking a sheet of paper and writing down what you're passionate about and all the skills that you possess. Mm -hmm. This is the first step because you will need the skills to start your business. You will need the passion to drive your business. You know, your skills are like the foundation of a house, but your passion is like the electricity, the water that keeps the house running. In a car, it's like the fuel that runs the engine. You need this passion to drive your business. So step one again, conduct a passion and skills analysis. Step two, do what I'll call very basically a market identification. You know, in um, marketing, we'll call this something else, but this is not a marketing class. So we're going to put it very simply. Conduct market identification and needs analysis. What is market identification? Simply put, ask yourself who is going to buy what I'm going to sell. Anybody who is going to buy what you're going to sell is your market. So for some people, your colleagues can be your market. In school, your classmates can be your market. At home, your neighbors can be your market. So who are the people who would buy from you? This is your market. So think about your market. Ask yourself, who will I sell to? It is important that you know who you're going to sell to. 
Because if you don't know who you're selling to, you will not know exactly what to produce or what to sell to them. So remember this step we are talking about market identification and needs analysis. So when you know who your market is or what your market is, then think of what the buyers in that market will need from you. For example, uh, where I live, there is a neighbor of mine who sells water to me. And she sells water to everybody else in the compound. Because she saw there were lots of people there who work. There are young babies there who need to consume mineral water. And she thought, okay, this is my market. I'm going to trade in water. So she buys water, she stocks at home, and she sells to us. So she identified the market and saw the need that we have. You have to do the same. Identify your market and then look at the needs. Now let me share something else that I did while I was a student. This is my story. I was a salesperson for an international cosmetics brand. I'm not going to do publicity. I was a salesperson for them while a student. And I was working from home. Now, when I started this business, I thought of who my market would be. I was a student, I did not have a lot of time. So I said, okay, my market is going to be my family and my friends. Mm -hmm. Now I took a sheet of paper and I wrote down all the names of my family members who were around me and all my friends. Mm -hmm. And I said, these are the people who are going to constitute my market. Now, what are their needs? This is a cosmetic brand. And all of us, we use body lotion, any kind of body lotion. We use hair lotion, we use shampoo. So I started calling every one of them and saying, see, I want to start this business. What would you need? And this one said, oh, I will need shampoo. This one says, I buy this often. I buy every month end. I'll buy every uh, mid month. I'll buy from the start of the month. I wrote all of that down. I had more than 270 contacts and those people constituted my market. This is how I did this home business that supported me through school. So think of who your market is. You, you don't need to go far. You don't need to think you want to go to Mashembopi to sell. You can sell at home. You can sell in the office. You can sell at school. You can sell in your neighborhood. So think of your market, but also Consider the needs of your market. What is it that they need? Because if you're going to be selling what is not needed, then you're not going to have a profitable home-based business. So think of what is needed and focus on selling that. That was step two. Step three, what capital requirements are there? Capital in terms of startup capital. How much would you need? To start this home-based business you must think about this now you have done two things which are very important first you have analyzed the passion and the, the skills that you have you have now identified your market and the needs now you have to ask yourself if you have the financial cap capability of selling to this market so you ask yourself for this business that I want to do to meet this need do I have the capital? How much does it take, by the way, to start? You can ask people who have already done it. You can do your own uh, findings by going out to ask for the prices of the things that you would need and sit down to prepare your budget. But you must think of the, the capital requirements, startup capital requirements, and where you're going to get this capital from. Are you going to save from your regular monthly income? Then you may be planning to start in two, three months because you have to save first, then you begin. Are you going to borrow from friends and family? Then you have to sit down and identify all the friends and family who can give you this money if you need. There is a neighbor of mine who sells bread. She supplies bread to all the neighbors in the morning. This is very smart. She knew that everybody in the morning would need breakfast. And so she identified all the households and she thought that she would be supplying bread to them. And she told us that to start this business, she did not need up to 5,000 francs. Mm -hmm. Because it's just to, the guy for the bread comes in the morning to supply. She now goes door to door and supplies the bread and we pay her. Mm -hmm. 
But now, as many other neighbors around are getting to know about it, the demand is increasing. She is increasing the quantity she is buying. So small things, what is it that they need? You may not need a lot of money to start. Something very small. Is it vegetables? I'm sure we all know that dole. They do at home. I also have neighbors who come to their house to supply that. The startup capital will not be much. So when we are thinking of a home-based business, don't think of a huge capital. Uh -huh. It's not necessarily like that. Small things that can meet the needs of people around you will help you to have the side income and become financially independent. So this is the, the third step. Think of how much capital you need. The fourth gets exciting. Step out. Step out. What do we mean by step out? You know, uh, all the other things we've been doing are things that will stay in our heads. We do them when we have our private time. We are planning, we are identifying our markets, we are thinking of the skills we have, we are thinking of how much capital we need. But now we have to go out there. This is called stepping out. Again, like my neighbors I mentioned, they stepped out and they came to me. Like they went to other neighbors and said, we are going to start this business. I am going to do this. So please, in two weeks, you can start buying bread from me. I can even supply you. In one week, I will start supplying dole to everybody in the neighborhood. This is stepping out. If you're doing a business that you can sell online, creating a page and starting to write about your business is stepping out. This is kind of what we call personal branding. You're letting people know that they can do business with you. This step of stepping out is very crucial because people will only do business with you if they know that you exist. People don't do business with people they don't know exist. So if you're watching STV today, it's because you've known that STV exists. Otherwise, you would be watching another channel. So we need to step out and let people know that we are existing and we're going to start our home-based business. Now, step four um, is, is step five, sorry, is closely related to step four. And it's quite interesting. This is when we start talking about offering free first. So offer free first. And I need to write so this. You start by yes. Offering the, the so this is free. So you start by offering free first. How? Uh huh. Listen, uh, when you do business, people don't know what they are buying. And when people don't know what they are buying, they don't buy. So what you want to do is to, you know, um, in, in, in a very common imagery, when you want to, they say in Pidgin English, when you want to catch a fowl, what do you do? You, you, you le, give le, them okay. corn. Le maïs. Yes, this is offering si tree. Le maïs. So you are giving free because you want to attract. Mm -hmm. This is the same thing that happens in business. When mm -hmm. you start giving something free, then you can attract people to mm -hmm. your business. Now, not free from your capital, please. Huh? Don't give free from your startup capital. There are many ways you can give free. Mm -hmm. One of the ways is that you would give advice about what you're going to be selling. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to be selling food, for example, I would start advising people on my page about healthy feeding. I will help to give them a menu that can help them to feed healthy even while they are at work. I will give tips on, on what kind of food, how to mix food so that you have a balanced diet. I will give free. Now imagine, Calvino, that you know some lady who is always teaching you how to eat, how to cook. Mm -hmm. The day she tells you that she is selling food, would you buy that food? <laughs> of course, mm -hmm. because she has been giving you now, you, are, you have built trust. Mm -hmm. You know that she knows what she's talking about. She understands food. Mm -hmm. you know, she, she, she will feed me healthy. And when she brings this food, that this is food I have prepared, you want to eat that. Mm -hmm. So this is one way you can give free. Give free so that people can build trust. Because in this kind of business where they are not seeing you, trust is very important. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, if you have a place where people can come in and look around and it is easier to do business. When you're doing from home, people are not coming into your home, your bedroom to see how you're processing everything. Trust is important.
this is why you need to offer free first mm. that's why i said you have to start by stepping out start branding yourself then start offering free so that you can build trust and attract demand it is very important sometimes people buy from a place without knowing why they are buying mm -hmm. but they're actually buying because of the free offers so before you start thinking of charging anybody for your home-based business think of stepping out becoming known and then offer free it is very important you're not going to offer free forever you're going to offer free so that people can finally decide that i have to do business with this person so for every kind of business you can offer free for every kind of business so it is just since you master what you do why not help the people who are going to be buying from you understand how important this business is this is giving free so it is always very important to think of what is it that can accompany my business what can i give free that can pull this demand to my business when i just started my career i used to do this i used to train young people and organizations for free but i wasn't doing it because i had too much time mm -hmm. i was doing that because i was building my create my clientele base mm. today they know that i don't do free mm -hmm. they have to pay for it but if i did not give free they would never have trusted what i can give them in terms of value mm -hmm. so i was doing this free to show them that this is what i can give you when you start paying and even more i remember a young man asked me once i am a website designer a web designer how can i give free then i said come and do some work for me we have to update our website and i'll show you how to do free then he came and i said so today you're just going to update our home page and he did all of that he said you're not going to pay i said that's fine i like it mm -hmm. and so since you have updated just the home page and not the about us our services and all of that hey i know that this guy is good at what he does so if i'm calling you to come back and update the about us services i know i have to pay mm -hmm. because you have convinced me on the home page that you're good that was free so everybody can give free it's important that you think of what you can give free set a period okay for the first two weeks i'm going to give free or for the first one month i'm going to give free or, or whatever so that i can build this demand before i start moving to the next step which is our last step which is step six offer value and charge a fee mm -hmm. now it is not just doing a home-based business i'm going to really discuss this because there are some two words that are really critical here the first one is value and the second one is fee mm -hmm. that's pricing what about value we said here two weeks ago that customers cannot give you value if you do not create value for them everybody who is coming to do business with you is expecting some kind of value so people pay for value they do not pay because of how we look or where we live or the language we speak they pay for value and since we're here i like to use examples that we all understand if you're sitting at home in your office or wherever you are you're watching stvs because you know that stv is giving you value yeah. so you're giving them your your time it is the same for every business you must be able to give your customers value so that your customers will also give you value and what is the value that customers give us money money mm -hmm. but the value we give them is meeting the need that they have so think if you're starting a home-based business you must give your customers value there are no two ways about it so if i want to eat healthy food then give me healthy food this is value don't give me food that is not healthy for me maybe it's too salty this is not value so while you have stepped out you've given free now that you have to start step six charging a fee think of giving value value should always be top priority all the time it is sometimes dicey someone will say but 
if I'm doing a service, what kind of value? Everybody does it like this. You shouldn't do it like everybody. That yeah. is why there's competition. Okay. If you do it like everybody, you are kicked out of the market. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to get um, too hard, but I need to say it. That there are some TV stations today we are not watching any longer. That people used to watch. But there are people are not watching now because of value. When you tune to them, you don't see value. So people start leaving and start watching others. So if you think that everybody does it like this, let me also just do it like this. Then there's no value you're adding. And if you're not adding value, nobody is going to pay the fee, which is our second key word, fee. Now this comes from something very important that we call in business pricing. Mm -hmm. The price you set for your business can either make your business or kill it. Yeah. So I'll start with setting low prices. Many people think that when you start your business and you set low prices, everybody will come to that business. It's not true. Because there is something that they call in business customer perception. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we think that when a product is too cheap, the quality is questionable. We think that. It is just the general perception. So you would find that you're doing something really good, but because you price too low, people are not trusting you enough to buy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that was, I wanted to ask a question because yes. of, uh, about this, because uh, you can have low prices, mm -hmm. but the quality is not good. Good. This is just the perception. Because there are times when you can have low prices and good quality. Mm -hmm. But the general perception we all have is that when the price is low, it means that the quality is not, it's not very it's good. Not this very is what we all think. It is like, mm, I have a student who's, who sells food from home. And she told me in class that she sells a plate of food at 500 francs. Mm -hmm. My first reaction was like, really? How do you sell a plate of food at 500 francs in Douala? And then she said she does. So in my mind, I was thinking like, mm, it means that the quality is really low. This is what was in my head. Mm -hmm. It may not be so. It may not be so. But the fact that she's selling at 500 francs, all of us in this place will not go and buy. Because we have already put something in our heads that 500 francs, it means that something is really not okay. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we have to understand our markets, understand the needs, understand the perception before we set prices. It's very critical. Now, high prices. Some people feel that when your prices are high, people will rush because they think that your quality is high. This is what some people think. It is not always like that. Because we still operate in an economy where people are sometimes ready to trade quality for convenience. Mm -hmm. So somebody will say, okay, if there's no quality, so what? At least I can still buy it. So you're selling expensive and people are not coming to buy because they think that you're pricing too high. So you need to understand. You see why it was important for us to go to step two, to understand our market first before we get to step six where we are charging a fee. If you do not understand your market, you do not know who you're selling to, your, your pricing is going to have a problem. I know that when I'm coming to sell here, I can cook food and come to STV to sell. I'm not going to tell you that a plate of food is 200 francs. You will not buy. When I leave, you will say that what did I put in that food? It means that there is no uh, crayfish in that food. There's <laughs> nothing in that food. That's why I'm selling at 200 francs. Yeah. You will not buy. But if also I come here and I'm selling a plate of food at 5,000 francs, you also not buy. Because how many times in a month will you buy that plate of food at 5,000 francs? You will not be buying every day. So I need to understand my market and strike a balance. Then I can charge a fee that would make it possible for my customers to buy and create this value that I'm looking for. So there are two things that we have talked about here. This step six, create value for your customers and then charge the appropriate fee. Mm -hmm. If you charge the wrong fee, you are in trouble. You will not sell. Mm -hmm. The wrong fee is not only high, it can be low as well. Mm -hmm. So you just need to understand which fee fits the market you're going to serve. This is important. So if I want to run through uh, all the steps that we have discussed here, because this is the heart of our discussion, we have said that you will start with a passion, 
skills analysis. What are my passions? What skills do I have? I cannot start a, a food business if I don't know how to cook. If I'm not a skilled cook, this is just shooting myself on the leg because I will start the business, but I'll be such a bad cook that people will not buy my food. So I need to know the skills that I have first before I decide which kind of business I want to venture into. But the skills alone will not be enough. That's why we're moving to step two. Identify your market and mm -hmm. identify the needs of your market. Who will you sell to? Home-based businesses must not serve the entire dweller or the entire woman or wherever you are. I said just from your place of work, from your home, from your neighborhood, you can identify a market and sell to them. Step Mais, three. Euh, juste pour continuer, parce que quand vous êtes en train d'avancer, je yes. voulais savoir si, par exemple, vous, on parle de nourriture mm -hmm. et que la personne ne connaît pas plus, est-ce qu'une personne qui ne sait rien en ce qui concerne son business peut se lancer là parce qu'elle se dit qu'il y a l'argent mm -hmm. I think we had that question the other time with Calvino. Mm -hmm. you know? It mm -hmm. is possible to do it. Parce qu'il y a beaucoup de femmes qui vendent la nourriture. Parfois, vous allez dans le restaurant, mm -hmm. vous avez envie de gifler la femme, la lui dit, <laughs> mais arrête de faire ça. Yes. Ce n'est pas pour toi. Yes. Parce que ce que tu manges, c'est moche. Yes. Tellement moche, tu as envie de lui dire que, mais attends, il y a yeah. un problème. Yes, there is a problem. It is possible to do it, but it is not advisable to do it, please. Mm -hmm. This is why you need to understand your passion and your skills first. I shouldn't go and be cooking food to give people when I don't know how to cook. That's crazy. Because people will come the first time to eat and they will never come again. Bien sûr. And they will tell their friends never to go there to eat. And so this business is not growing. It's not going to grow. Of course, you think that there's money in food, but there's money in other things. Mm -hmm. Can you sell the raw food? Why must you insist on cooking it? Mm -hmm. Sell the raw food if you know you're not a good cook. But if you know that you have a daughter at home, and this is an amazing um, advantage of starting a home-based business. If you know that you have a daughter at home who cooks well, then she can cook the food and you sell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you know she does. Because I think that as, as um, human beings, we all know when we are not good cooks. <laughs> we all know that. Because I, I think we've not just eaten our food, we've eaten from other places. And we, if we are honest, we know that we are not very good cooks. Mm -hmm. We are very mm -hmm. good cooks. So it is important. The question asked is very vital. Don't get into a business you're not skilled to carry forward, especially from home. You will just get discouraged because nobody is going to buy. That is why we are starting from identify your passion and your skills first. If you are skilled in cutting grass, then start a home-based business cutting grass for neighbors. Don't say you want to go and start a business cutting people's hair because you don't know how to do that. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the second step we're looking at, at is the market identification. Now you know who can buy. You know who can buy from you and the, the needs that they have. The third step is to think of how much capital you need. Can you raise that? We all have more than one skill. I think that we have many skills. And if you think that starting a business that requires this particular skill will require this much capital, you may want to hold on for a while and start with something that doesn't require a lot of capital. The fourth step we said, you will have to step out. So you cannot do business at home and you're thinking or you're thinking that you're doing business at home and nobody knows. It means like my neighbor did, she came to my door and said, was it, I'll, come and I'll start a business in one week. I'll be selling water. Mm -hmm. So please don't buy water from outside. Mm -hmm. She came and told me. The other one from Dole came and said, I'll be selling Dole. So if you need Dole, this is stepping out. If you're doing online, create a page on Facebook, on Instagram, and write there that you're going to be starting this business. This is what it's about. Step out and start branding yourself. Start taking good pictures if, if you must if you are selling clothes start taking clothes pictures of your dresses and putting on your page let people see that you have started okay step out okay then offer free uh, first i remember now about clothes somebody will be asking that but would they be giving clothes free mm -hmm. you will not give clothes free but you will give advice on how to dress to particular occasions because there are people who do not know how what to wear 
to particular occasions. So you can start by giving them this, these tips. But you can also, uh, the person can come with, uh, with the, the material and then you sew yes. without without charging without charge because you're not you're not going to do to spend anything much mm -hmm. stitching that dress so you could say okay for this first week if i am that's a, a beautiful example mm -hmm. i'm starting a home-based business stitching dresses but for these first two weeks anybody who brings their dresses will not pay mm -hmm. this is giving free just to see just what to I'm see doing. what i can do mm -hmm. and after that you can start paying that is a beautiful example thank you mm -hmm. so Remember, you can offer free first. For any business, you can offer free first. And then finally, create value. Offer this value and charge the appropriate fee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm saying appropriate because it's very important. Don't charge a fee that at the end of the day you cannot sell. Mm -hmm. Don't, because people have a, a way of perceiving the fees that we charge. Business is about the exchange of money. Mm -hmm. and value so money is at the heart of business if you cannot charge the appropriate fee you can have the best product but people will not buy so sometimes you find that your business is, is stagnating or collapsing because of your your pricing so you can learn how to price effectively <coughs> but the basic principle is look at the value you're creating Look at the market you're serving, and then look at how much you will charge. If your market is a classroom of high school students, you cannot be selling a plate of food at, at 5,000. High school students, they won't buy. Mm -hmm. They have a, a, a class. Okay? Mm -hmm. So And you can also not be, be thinking that because they're high school students, I just need to sell a plate of food at 50 francs. They too will have choices. They will start questioning. So a balance is supposed to be struck. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kavino wanted to ask a question. Oui, je, je sais pas, j'ai une question. Mm -hmm. Je sais pas si créer un business à domicile c'est pour un début ou alors ça peut être un choix de vie définitif. Parce que moi par exemple, j'ai été un coiffeur. Mm -hmm. Avant je coiffais, mon premier salon était à Daido. Mm -hmm. Voilà. Et puis pendant que je coiffais, je payais la, la, la location le mois et tout et tout. Il y a un, un autre monsieur. Bon, finalement on, est, on était des amis. Tu as lui il passait avec ma lettre tout le temps. Il aussi c'était un coiffeur, il avait tout dans son sac. Uh -huh. C'est-à-dire il allait chez le client, il coiffe chez le client. Yes. Il n'est pas resté chez lui. Yes. On l'appelle là-bas, il part. Yeah. Bon, je veux savoir, celui qui fait son business, il a la maison ou alors il part, fait son business chez les gens, il yeah. utilise le courant des gens là. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Et toi qui as ton truc déjà, uh -huh. quel est le plus euh, lucratif ou alors quel est le plus... The business the plus uh, rentable. If, of course, if we are talking about lucrative, then it's starting from home. Mm. It's your home-based business, which is more lucrative. You just said it. That he's going to use the, the power, the energy, electricity of somebody else. So not his, he's not paying for that. Mm -hmm. But of course, you balance it up that he's paying transport. But he's pricing. On his pricing, you add transportation. Absolutely. So doing it from home is convenient. Mm -hmm. It is cost effective because you were paying rent, mm -hmm. you were paying bills, and, and all of that. And your probably taxes. Mm -hmm. He is not paying all of that. So it's a good starting point depending on the business. Mm -hmm. But for somebody like that, it could just be his business model. It could just be his business model because the, the issue is about value. Like we said here, since he's going to people's homes, and cutting their hair and they keep calling him it means that he's really giving them value okay. and the best form of marketing is word of mouth of advertising so Le bouche en people who keep advertising telling their friends that this guy is good mm -hmm. and he's convenient it means that even at 6 a.m he can come cut your hair whereas the other people are still at home they are sleeping you can call him even at 10 p.m he can come cut your hair mm -hmm. so if he continues like this he builds a strong clientele base and the good thing about this clientele base is called loyalty. When you do that, you have loyal customers who will always call you. Mm -hmm. But you who had a shop, maybe I'm just passing and I see, I stop. But maybe I'm living the other side of town. So I won't come back to you. I will not. Because I came to you accidentally. But if this person is the person who is always cutting my hair, I'll always call him. 
So I'm going to build this loyalty. And in business, what gives us money is not a one-time customer. It is repeat business that gives money. So we consider that the first time someone does business with you, you're making a loss. There is no profit. Because you have spent a lot to attract this person. So he's just coming to give you back that money. Mm -hmm. Now you start making profit when he comes again and again. Then he starts bringing other people. This is when you start making a profit. So it is better for mm -hmm. a business like that you do it from home. Mm -hmm. And this is why but we are here today. We are talking about home base because it is easy to start. It's more profitable. It's easy to run. You avoid all the taxes, all the rents and all of that. And you can use... You can even get staff from your home. Ok. Bon, est-ce que une autre question, est-ce que c'est tous les métiers qu'on peut faire en ligne? Um, well, home-based -ce business tout... may not be just online. Mm -hmm. So, home-based business is not necessarily online. And yes, yeah, so every kind <coughs> of business you can start from home. So, you see, the biggest perfume brands started in someone's kitchen. They started in the kitchen. And now it's an international perfume. Pareil uh, pour McDonald's, Good. KFC. Yes. Uh, il a commencé chez lui. Yes. Il, a, il avait commencé uh, KFC son histoire à yes. faire uh, ses petits trucs. Et and puis then, deux voisins achetaient. Ah mais c'est bon. Et puis ainsi de suite et, yes. et c'est devenu le KFC qu'on a aujourd'hui. So it, it, you can start uh, even mm -hmm. media. Si tu es par exemple Morgier. What is Morgay? <laughs> you have a... It's a business um, there. It's a business. No, it's not a business. He works somewhere. It's not his business. But now, one who has a problem. He says that it's his business. The one who has a problem. It's not you. Kavino, this is it's a good question because someone may be thinking like you. But you know, there are some businesses that are regulated by law. Now this one is regulated by law. You mm -hmm. can keep cops at home. Voilà. So it's regulated by law. You can't can do Okay. So it's not a regular business that we are talking about. This one is more uh, of a, a social service that usually the government gets very involved in. Okay. Other questions? You always have many no, questions. questions. Le, 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 I wrote my question and I want to... Uh, the people you you okay i've already uh, uh, for the home base yes the uh is que uh, because you have the whole a, a business at home mm -hmm. how you if you don't have internet mm -hmm. how did you cope to oh, do okay very good the, the same thing i was i was uh, telling Calvin because before. there's it's true that we have Facebook, yeah. and then if you don't know how to do, mm -hmm. to use Facebook, to use those uh, Facebook because yes. people people are using Facebook. Yes, a lot to do business mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is not every business that you need to go online. Mm -hmm. Like my neighbors who are selling water and bullet, I'm not sure they are on Facebook. I'm not sure. So to substitute that. They have gone house to house and told people that they are doing this business. House to house and house to house and house to house around the neighborhood. So it depends on your business and the magnitude of the business that you want to do. Mm -hmm. So if you think that it's business that must go online, then you have to learn it. Now I told you I, uh, last week that I taught a young girl how to create a page and put her business on Facebook. She didn't know how to do that. And she told me that this business is not good. And I said, why? What are you selling? She says she makes um, cream, skin lotion from avocado, mm -hmm. from coconut, from, but nobody is buying. Mm -hmm. I said, because nobody knows about it. Mm -hmm. Then she said, how will I tell people about it? I said, are you on Facebook? She said, no. Then I said, how do you want to sell? So come, come and sit here. And in five minutes on her phone, we created a page for her. And I told her, your phone is good. Snap and just share. And just Et elle ne sait pas qu'à partir de sa page, elle part en WhatsApp number. Yes. Donc dès que quelqu'un a seulement tape et puis elle, c'est comme ça le business. So you can start from telling just your neighbors mm -hmm. and get someone who can help you set up. If you do not have the possibility of going online, identify your neighbors as being your market and sell to them. Mm -hmm. Because your neighbors need, they must need something from you. It could be soap, it could be whatever. Just identify 
your neighbors who can buy and the needs that they have and then give them that not necessarily selling online so you can do it online but you may not need to go online depending on the business mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but today my advice is it is cheap to go online and it helps your business to grow faster mm -hmm. so if you have the possibility of learning do it Qu'est-ce qu'on va donc conclure euh, aujourd'hui? We are concluding that everybody needs a home-based business. Whether you want to end up an entrepreneur, a business person or not, you need a home-based business because you're going to learn vital lessons that will stay with you forever. Like how to sell yourself, emotional intelligence, and how to be persistent because this is a life lesson. Business is not going to be easy. But in business, you learn how to keep going even when it is tough. This is going to help you even in life, even in your marriage, even in friendships, even in school. Once you have learned the lesson of persistence, it is going to carry you throughout your life. So everyone needs to own and start a home-based business. No matter what you're selling, start a home-based business. Absolutely. En tout cas, merci beaucoup uh, pour ce matin. Euh, J'espère que vous également à la maison, vous prenez le temps de noter euh, tout ce qui se dit ici, parce que ça va vous aider demain. Et puis vous direz, ah mais je regardais Stevie un matin, et puis là, euh, il y avait une coach qui était là, elle a donné quelques petits conseils. J'ai récupéré le conseil et voici aujourd'hui, mon business est parti. Donc il est important d'être là le mercredi et de nous écouter vraiment de fond en comble. On est à la fin de l'émission. Merci encore. Thank you. Bon, bon Thank you. Uh, Calvino Mire, grâce, demain c'est jeudi. Euh, oui, oui. avec la grâce de la Dieu prophétesse. on se retrouve demain pour parler des choses de Dieu, de Dieu. des choses bien en tout cas portez-vous bien et surtout Ciao. merci merci nous et étions on, en direct vous pour la pour la pour, pour le match, pour le match du Cameroun, Cameroun Mali. Mali on est tous derrière le Cameroun et oui, le Cameroun va gagner combien 2-0 alors c'est <rire> tout <rire> à, à, à demain <rire> Go, go, go.